Hi guys, welcome to Hope This Works. I'm Kevin and thanks for joining me. Today we are fixing the points and condenser on a Montgomery Ward's 8 horsepower Briggs & Stratton snowblower. I have already taken off the flywheel and the recoil shroud, which was actually kind of a challenge. Uh, I have looked up the motor and uh, the code and the model, and this is a 1964 Briggs and Stratton 8 horsepower horizontal shaft engine. Uh, these are the original points in this motor. As you can see, I'm actually breaking the seal uh, where the ground wire goes in and connects to the condenser right there. Uh, right now, I'm just looking and inspecting to see any corrosion, any damage, any obviously obvious defects. I'm spinning the uh, motor around by the pulley on the front sh on the drive side and see that the uh, plunger and the points is uh, operational at this point. I am going to be replacing this set. While you're in here it is good to just buy a new set. Breaker points and ignition or breaker points and condenser cost me about twelve dollars at my local store, my small equipment store. Just taking off the condenser now, take off your little bracket. The two wires, the ground wires, are held into the condenser by a spring. I'm going to show you that real quick. It's not too hard to get off, but it is a challenge to reinstall. I'm just using a pair of needle nose pliers here to depress the spring and then the wires will slide right out. Uh, there is, see a hole in the top of the condenser right there and that spring has to be compressed. In a new kit they include a clear plastic little plunger that has a depression on it. So once you smash that together with your vice grip like hands, then you can slide those wires in. It is a uh, not very easy to do it on the first time and it appears that I'm just straighten, straightening my wires out right there so it makes it easier to put the condenser on I smash that little plunger jam the wires in boom just easy as that first try actually that was about the sixth try <laughs> At this point, uh, you just want to put your bracket back on, screw that in there. You want to have it loose because that's actually how you will adjust your points gap between your breaker point arm and your condenser. I'm pulling out the old plunger because in my kit they included a new plunger. I just inspect it, double check that they're the same length, and uh, put the new one back in it. It's really not a high wear item. Uh, it just rolls around and eccentric on that uh, on the crankshaft there. Now I'm installing the breaker arm, which is basically an arm with a, I believe, maybe stainless steel braided wire, and it's attached to a little barrel where that screw goes in. That barrel can only go on there one way. There's a little little notch, and it'll only go in there one way. And, it's orientated that way so the breaker arm will slide in a depression that you, I believe you can see on that barrel. This is actually a, <laughs> quite a challenge. You need to install a spring through two little holes there hanging off the breaker arm and then install the other end of the spring onto a post that's um, manufactured into the case of the engine. You can roughly see that and then basically um, be very careful not to bend the breaker arm. I, I would imagine it's, it would take a lot of force to bend the breaker arm. Um, and slide the spring over the post. Slide one end of the breaker arm into that groove. And then just kind of pull on the tension of that spring up until that breaker arm is into position above the plunger and centered. Um, they don't have cameras that fit on your fingers. Uh, you could see what I'm actually doing if I had a camera there, but uh, my big hands are in the way. There really isn't a good location to 
replace a camera. So I actually have my GoPro mounted to the handle assembly of the snowblower. You're gonna to want to be able, you're gonna to want to set the points when your crankshaft eccentric has pushed that plunger and that breaker point assembly all the way up. And it's quite convenient. There's a little instruction pack right there. Folded in four, comes out to about 22 thou. And or, about between 20 and 30 thousandths of an inch is usually where I'll set my breaker points. Some guys are good enough, you can eyeball about 30 thousandths. Usually, you can, if you don't have a set of feeler gauges, maybe you do have a pair of dial calipers, uh, grab some cardstock or a piece of notebook paper and fold it until you get it pretty close. I check this periodically, tighten that condenser up just in case it doesn't slide and check it periodically and then I, I crank it right down there we go next time I'm gonna gonna install the cover back on here and uh, this thing is an actual beast I installed a flywheel and it is quite a challenge to get the keyway lined up uh, but I did that installed the recoil and lube the recoil mechanism, put that back together, and I actually had to fix the drive assembly, uh, which was, I call it Frankenblower at this point. It does work. Uh, it kind of beats you to death. That's a challenge wrestling the machine. Uh, I will have a video coming out of how I fixed the drive assembly without taking the wheels off if you guys are interested. Uh, this is a good backup snowblower for me now. And uh, as you can see, Wyoming, we get some snow. Thanks for joining me here today, guys. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for all your notifications. Uh, here, I hope this works. We are all about inspiration, education, motivation, creating curiosity, and fixing some snowblowers and some lawnmowers and whatever else I can come up with. As always, hope this works.